My name is Rhapsody and welcome back to Monster Train Friends and Foes. We're going to be continuing with the Awoken Will Denton as well as that Covenant 25. You know how it goes. All right. Uh, double Glimmer, Double Hidden Passage, a single Pyre Shot. Maybe we use the Hidden Passages to overstack a floor and then enchant with Quick so we have a super quick floor. Uh, add a Sting Spell into your hand. Well, the possibility exists also that we go for an Incant instead so sting spell every single turn is pretty good well there's the incant and there's the quick how about we try and do both how about that eh okay we also don't really need quick units as much because we are the two characters that have the easiest time directly applying survivability to a character uh through giving direct armor to a character or healing up a character's health uh, enemy unit sent with armor 10. How much do I care about that? Like, not at all? Eh, somewhere near not at all. We'll probably end up taking a little pie damage. But, um... Still don't mind. Right, we'll dance in. Boom, boom, boom. And then... Double root seeds. Perfect. Alright. So what am I going to want to do here? Still haven't drawn another train steward. I could just ascend the Forge Disciple past, assuming that I'm not going to be able to kill it. Take very little damage to it. So it'd be ping this, ascend you, and then... I mean, ultimately, the best thing here is, is Root Seeds. That Sting on the top line doesn't even save us a turn's worth of the Forge Disciples hits there, so I don't think that's relevant. Do we have any health? Glimmer? Yeah, we don't really have healing in the deck, so I'm going to put the Train Steward in front. And I'm going to double cast on this floor in order to just get a little bit more... Uh, a little bit more damage. Well. Probably should have used one of the things on the top line as it turns out here. I'm so far from drawing any more stings, right? Start of your turn, add a sting spell into your hand. Maybe I'm just drawing too many cards a turn, and that's, that's why I keep missing them, I guess. Um. I think I'm fine if I do that. Nope. Miscounted the days. Not didn't account for the days, just miscounted the impact it was going to have. Uh, okay, Trader is joining the fight instantly. Is going to be growing larger. Um, Wildwood Sap seems like a reasonable pickup here. Get some health on the Will Denton. Then makes it easier to put a backliner behind you. I like Ritual of Battle because I'm probably going to want to put a multi-striker behind the Will Denton here. Well, none of these are multi-strikers, but that's some damage. That's probably going to be necessary, at least for the first couple bosses. Uh, <clears throat> I think what would make me bail is seeing an Animus of Will here, as well as like some good pickups. Ooh, plus 10 and quick on an Animus of Will. <gasps> That'd be pretty good, I guess. Well, now we definitely don't need to multi-class into Enchant Quick. Uh, Nobles Enemy Spikes, enter with Spike 3. Okay, so I'm going to have to set up on the top floor here, or middle floor if the capacity doesn't allow. Dang. Well, I can't set up on the middle. 
So I guess I go train steward, horned warrior there, and then... Guess that's the best next I can do. Uh, can't play the Animus of Will, otherwise I'm just going to kill it. Play the train steward and get that dead. And then Animus of Will on the next floor. Yep, because then later I can use a hidden passage to ascend that if that's how I actually need to take care of the boss in the end. Hopefully it's not though. Okay. Let's take both the chumps down easily. Oh my god, we're increasing the damage pretty significantly here. But I think ultimately I will need that. Unless, of course, I just draw Sting, Sting, Sting. And win the game that way. Or rather than the match. Steel Enhancer looks a lot better now. Gives us the ability to have some health loss on the Atoms of Will, which may give us the ability to do things like a, a Razor Chop Edge. Would be relevant here. None of those, though. Alright. Spell upgrades? Yeah, I mean, Ritual of Battle wants some upgrades pretty badly. I mean, hold over negative one on the cost for Ritual of Battle is. It's pretty good. Gives us the ability to make the Animus of Will... Pretty good. Uh, plus 20 magic power and consume. Happy to put that on a torch. Let's have a s quick look at the... We have it out here. Uh, ascend a unit to the bottom floor. Apply days two. Ascend an enemy to the pyre room. Apply days three. Maybe I take Trap Shoot. In fact, I think I do take Trap Shoot literally just for the reason that with a Ritual of Battle in every single one of my hands, I am going to need just a little bit more uh, low-cost cards in our deck. Okay, so Talos is going to apply Sap on Strike. Let's try there. Have to play the Ritual Battle every time. Plus it results in us taking significantly less damage here, right? Just torch. Good going, Animus of Will. Keep it up. Oh yeah, the 7 damage was uh, not possible to be stopped because Talos was dealing that. Right, that makes sense. Uh, that steel enhancement out as well. Uh, I guess I just Wildwood Sap. Consumes itself out of the deck, makes it a lot easier of a choice right there. Look at this scaling on the Atoms of Will though. Like this is... This is getting nutty real early. The big thing we need to worry about is how are we going to make Wildleton actually a good frontline of this? Well, if we scale our damage high enough, do we need a good frontliner? Well, spreading spores is how you make a frontliner, right? Last Stand is pretty appealing right now as well. Just give it permafrost and wait until it's a thousand extra damage on the Madness of Will. Uh... Spreading Spores? Spreading Spores honestly does seem really good here. Alright, you got me. I'm taking a Spreading Spores. Should I Steel Worker to set up a second floor with a Horned Warrior? I really don't feel like I'm going to be investing in that floor at all if I do get it. And then it'll just slow down my pickup of the Animus of Will. Am I not running a two-floor strategy? Is that... Is that how this is going? Maybe what I'm doing is giving my Will Denton a uh, sweep root. 
later on. How many more banners do I have? None guaranteed. Uh, no, there's a Woken banner directly next to a Merchant of Steel. With Forgotten Boons as well. There's also a Hellvent over here and a Unstable Vortex. Oh, you know what I could do, actually? Is dupe the Animus of Will, and then I can put that on the same floor as a Will Denton using the Hidden Passage to all set them up. So what I'm actually doing is super overstacking a floor with the Will Denton as the front line. So yes, it is a single floor solution, but it is going to be a compressed multi-floor solution. Uh, we can be heroes just for one day. I might take energy here. Right? What are you going to be removing from the deck? Spreading Spores needs its cost decrease two times over. We want to incan as many cards as possible. Honestly, the draw doesn't really seem to make that much sense because I oftentimes am going to have a full draw 10 next turn and the Thorn Fruit's going to be hampering that a little bit. And if it was only for the fact that I was drawing 10 some turns, but I wanted extra draw on the first turn or the turns that I'm not drawing 10 as a result of all of the things, then it'd still be worthwhile taking draw plus one. But at the moment, the energy and the capacity still matter to us. Energy, most of which, I think. All right. So here, I was going to go for removing that. I also kind of just want... Well, I mean, I'm never playing the train suits if I draw them, right? Because I've always got other things in hand that are better to play. So that means they're not consuming out of the deck on play because I'm just not playing them, right? So let's get an Animus of Will here as well. Could it be a second ritual battle? Is that too much? That's too much, isn't it? That's my whole turn every turn just to do... Well, hang on though. Is it bad that it is my whole turn every turn that I do that? Is that actually a bad thing? All the root seeds, yeah, we miss out on those. Well, that's fine. Not awful. Honestly, like, after I set up my floor, basically all I really need is... Is those rituals of battle. God. Alright, let's actually have a look at the Dark Forge first, just in case it helps. So now we do get Sweep and Rooted, but Thorn Lord does have extra health. Like, a significant amount of extra health. How are we going to kill enemies with 105 health? By rooting them to the floor. So what I do is I take Strangler now and then I go Thorn Lord 2 later. Okay. Does that mean it's an easier or a harder time building one Animus of Will? Well, I mean, if I dupe a second Animus of Will here, what am I doing to buff the floor, right? Nothing. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, this this does mean that now a lot of my sca oh god those clipped guardians in the front line are going to be a bit of a problem, aren't they? This does mean that a lot oh but I'm not going to be able to kill the clipped conduits in the back line with with torches either to prevent them from passing. Yeah, I can't take this. Uh, we scale very 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 well right now with relics. Just because any of them that are related to stings are really good for us. Any of them that are related to spell casts are really good for us. Any of them that are related to uh, draw, really good to us. And anything that's related to rage is also really, really good for us. So. Um. Mm. Not loving this. Glimmer there on the bottom line. Get rid of the Wildwood Sap. Fallen Tori here. And I guess I just start trying to buff Will Denton on the top floor. Because it doesn't matter if we do anything to that. Defend defended there. Really? We didn't get a single Ascender there? Oof. 
All right. Uh, we'll go Animus of Will. The battle. Neat. Not so neat. Yeah, I can't play both rituals to battle this turn. It's got to be Glimmer, Root Seed, Ritual Battle, kills there. I have two in passages in the deck. I wasn't really expecting them this late. So, just really unfortunate. Rit the, the hidden passages also need to become zero cost. That's going to be a huge improvement for us. And away we go. Let's also get a train steward up there. Glimmer just so that we get another floor's time to mega buff all our units. Oh, love it. And then get buff, get buff. Destroy them. Now I definitely want the... Uh, what's it called again? Double rage on all the units on the floor. Totally forgotten its name. Ooh, preserve those. Engraft's not bad here either. Preserve thorns probably just a little better. Open a box, March of Shields and Pyre Chomper. March of Shields is a decent way to try and get some extra armor on my front line up. The only problem is I really... Am I going to the... the... Yeah, I probably am. What cost decreases am I already going to do in this deck? Like, one of them is definitely going to be on... Well, I double... I, I want to double cost reduce the Spreading Spores, don't I? And both of the Hidden Passages. Okay, I can't take more things that I plan to cost reduce yet. I'm carrying a lot of cost reduction debt. Double stack plus one, this is kind of dead. Doing that to spreading spores. You do that and then you reduce it and then it's still two cost. It's a uh, stack stone, why? That change is so cruel. When you play a spell, spells in hand that cost less reduces zero for the turn. Okay, so. The uh, Rituals of Battle now literally just say, like, every other spell costs zero. Emblem of the Exiles would be great, but this solves, like, all of our energy problems, which does give me the ability to actually double stack that Spreading Spores. Hilariously. Let's do it. And then after that, I should still. Anything that says draw plus one next turn, I should still upgrade like this. Uh, Glimmer. The extra 10 is nice. I'll get a swing tune consume on that. And then also decrease the cost of another root seeds. I can still Kevin, what do you got for us? Okay, minions can no longer heal. Well, that's gonna be bad for the regen that I'm probably gonna get from a spreading spore. I can also just get a heartstone right now. Give myself actually I'm gonna do that. I'm also gonna put it on the Animus of Will. The idea here is that now it can tank a single wave of damage occasionally, possibly. Uh, but also it's gonna have a lot of an easier time with sweet. It's gonna have a lot of an easier time with thorns. Makes life a lot easier. It's kind of like we put a large stone on it, but we also didn't decrease its size right now. Non-boss enemy units restore all health when they move up a floor. Well, I perma-root people, so they're not really going to move up a floor. So this is the perfect time for us to take this. Hopefully the top floor is not capacity decreased. Nice.
That's a lot of damage that uh, got negated immediately after. I should have just gone for the incant triggers on the top floor. I immediately forgot what I was uh, supposed to be planning for there. Uh, let's set you up and just cast, cast, cast to our heart's content. Nice. Spreading spores on you, and then a rage. There we go, and we're off to the races. Oh my god. Yeah, absolutely love to see it. Uh, I'm going to ascend you. So instead of protecting another unit, now you are behind everyone, so you have actually no impact on the combat. I think one thing that I was really underestimating about the power of ascending cards and descending cards was the effectiveness of just deleting an armor unit. Okay. So, pop that down there. This run came together really quickly. I am extremely pleased. Is there more in the run or is it now just optimization that is this is like a, a big point that i think i bring up like super commonly but i think it is a point worth bringing up as commonly as i do uh but i also act no, no no let me actually go against that statement for a second i think it's something that i may need to bring up even more because i think it is that dramatically important and the thing is Did I forget what I was about to say in the preamble? What? What? Is it a card that I was playing? What? What? what, what? <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. The thing is, recognizing... Sorry, I thought I was talking about a card, but there were no cards in front of me that I thought I was referencing. The thing is... Stop stalling for time, Ryan. The... <laughs> Uh, I was stalling for time as a joke and then I legitimately forgot it again. Okay. The thing is, I need to focus more on recognizing when this deck has reached the potential that this deck is likely to reach and therefore is more about making its potential more consistent rather than developing upon its uh, potential. Tabby? I could easily still lose here. Uh, it happens in the world that we don't have enough regen on our character. That's how that one goes down. Whew. Thankfully, it's not the world that we live in. I figured that I'd build a tanky enough front line. It's, it's basically the best I could have done there. Ooh, Spike Steel and extra damage per stack? Sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, no? Yes, awake? No, awake? Hang on. I, I mean, I guess if I double stack it, actually. Uh, it's, it's not just if I double stack it. It's... I mean, it's fine as long as I don't care about playing it and spreading spores on the same turn. And do I care about playing it and spreading spores on the same turn? Not really. This is a card free floating by itself. I, I, I think I, yeah, I think I take the awake here happily. Um, God, Inferno is another card that I want to cast under the floors, right? Uh, Branding Rider can decrease the cost and then I can actually make my frontliner a lot tankier. And that's going to matter for the Seraph the Patient fight. It's going to matter a lot. We're now bloating the deck at this point. So I really, really hope that I have opportunities soon. Uh, okay, we have a opportunity soon to call the deck. I'm probably not really going to use the Merchant of Steel here. I just don't want to see a bunch of relics that I'm not going to be able to take. Um, and I do want to decrease the size of the deck. I'll, I'll look at this. Oh. 30 extra damage. I mean, it helps us early on. 
I think this might smooth out our damage curve. I didn't want to do that, but it was, I think, right? I think? I don't know. I really didn't want to have to do that, though. Okay. Um, I think we're setting up on the second floor now instead. And it's going to be okay that we're setting up on the second floor. As long as we get the... Or a... A hidden passage next turn. We are going to get the Horned Warrior, and we are also going to draw nine... No, ten cards, because we've got a Root Seed. So, it should be possible. <laughs> Alright, that one didn't work. Let's go for a Branding right, and then just uh, start the chain. There's no way you live on the bottom. Yeah, there's no way you live on the bottom floor. Just clarifying. All right. Steal and enhance them. Yes, yeah, so at this rate, I just pop you up there. But with my luck, the Seraph goes up. Yep, buffs that unit. And then I lose the Horned Warrior anyway. It's, it's not like I'm sad about that, though. If it didn't want to cooperate with my game plan, it's already dead to me. Might as well just make it official, you know? Could I ascend both of my units to the next floor? Is that a worthwhile thing to do? No, because the Horned Warrior is still dead to the first attack that hits it. I guess it does give me an extra turn to buff all of my minions. So it is not bad in that sense. I'll admit, not bad in that. Okay. Should battle two times over. Two waves remaining and... Sucks to miss out on the branding right there, but has to happen occasionally. Yeah, I really need to cut so many other cards from this deck right now. There's so many cards in between me and my next spreading spores and stuff like that. I need my decks to cycle faster. All right. Well, need is a strong word. I would very much like my deck to cycle faster. Speaking of cycle. I don't think that's how I do it. No, I, I scale my regen. We're just going to continue with the original plan. I don't. I think cycle of life is overcomplicating things, and I think it achieves basically the same things we already have other things to achieve. Spike of the Hellhorned, uh, similarly, I think, actually, uh, and transcend him. No. No benefit from taking that. Do I want extra capacity just so that I am more comfortable playing Wildleton and then Animus of Will on the top floor consistently? Yep. That's good enough. We already draw max 10 almost every turn. I, that's not a concern for us at all. The Concealed Cavern's Hellvent. That is the thing, is it not? What do we want in the Hellbent? A uh, second copy of Spreading Spores to start out with. That'll get the Spreading Spores off faster. What better way to get it to propagate through the deck more than to have a second one of it? Well, by cutting out the cards from the deck. I just don't really care about that Merchant of Steel. I do care about the, the Unstable Removal over there. That'd be nice. So 29 cards in the deck, right? 
two on removal, two very important, two extremely important. A lot of the other ones just kind of filler cards. How many of the consume out? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of them consume out, and one of them that consumes out adds three more to the deck that do not consume out. So my cycle is just always going to be slow. Which makes the spreading spores a lot easier of a choice here. Alright, I should go to the Concealed Cavern before I do anything else here, just in case it loses HP for me. Oh, okay. Uh, dang, maybe I shouldn't have duped yet. So if I put a major refraction on the Animus of Will, then what am I doing? I'm saying the Animus of Will goes on the second floor and holds its own for a round very happily until I get my Hidden Passage. That's what I'm saying. Am I comfortable saying that? If I make them one capacity, I don't even need to use the Hidden Passages anymore as long as we don't get the cost reduction on the... Uh, size reduction, rather, on the top floor. Big. B-I-double-G, or lowercase except for the first G. Upgrade to extra... No, it's it's definitely Thorn Lord, right? Yeah, we only care about the health on the yeah, we only care about the health on our frontliner, and also it scales twice as fast with Incant, so it will end up having more damage too. Non-boss enemy units gain eight damage. Now the thing about that is, do non-boss enemy units ever hit me? I'm pretty certain the answer is no. <laughs> Uh, oh my god, this is a great opening turn. We'll dance in. We'll get a, uh, Horned Warrior behind you. I'm gonna take the safety kills there. Okay. Animus? Buff? Okay, I still have a torch for the back. Oh, yeah, yeah, we good, we good, we good. Ascend. Torch for the backliner. Then any extra incants that I can play on the top floor happily. Hey, if I draw the second glimmer, I'm killing both of the world wings in the backline anyway, because it's already powered up. So yeah, all of these go on the top. You gotta love it when everything just becomes no cost. It's life so much easier. I honestly don't want to draw back into trap shoot. Should I just descend this unit? Oh, you know what? No, I'll do it on the bottom floor. Trap shoot has like proven not to be what I actually wanted in this deck. Yeah, it didn't really seem like there was any good opportunity to actually use those together. Alright, the wake. The ritual battle, and then just keep popping them off. Yeah, those backliners are a little bit annoying though. Okay. So I just used two stings there to try and make sure the frontliner is going to die to the Animus of Will in a single attack. Makes it a lot easier for us to attack through. Well, I mean, look. Do I just use a glimmer here? Yeah, I think so. Oh, I should have ascended one of the units on the bottom floor and then used the Glimmer. Just an extra kill for free. Uh, yeah, this is where it becomes a problem, where we have too many spreading spores and we can't play 
all of them. We can still only play one per turn. That said, I think it's atypical for us to draw three in a hand in our second cycle. Because there's only four in our deck by that point. I mean, if I wanted score, I could just ascend the enemy unit, but I do, I do just want to make absolutely certain that I haven't somehow ruined my own life here. There we go. Good animus. Gotta love that amount of money. Uh, Pyagro? I think I can take Pyagro now. What with the concerns of possibly wanting to play two. Uh, not the rest of those though. Maybe I should have taken the Pyagro that was offered previously. I don't remember what I took over it though. Spell upgrade, spell upgrade, spell upgrade. So we do want to decrease the cost of branding, right? We also want to double stack the Awake if possible or... I mean, hold over awake is even better. Every single turn, make both of the rituals battle cost nothing. Permafrost. All right, let's look at the merchant trinkets. Those are all garbage. Consume ground's pretty effective. So is actually winged indulgence. Just gives us a lot more rounds of survivability. So ideally, I want to make sure after all of my purchases here, I still have uh, 5, 20, 480 left over. I may just want to purchase a bunch of removals here. In fact, I think I do. In fact, I might uh, may want that more than I want some of those relics. Permafrost is super interesting because then I just leave us spreading spores in hand for when it decreases the cost of everything. Uh, uh, if it's tied with another card in hand that I would prefer. Maybe I do it to the Awake for the same reason though. And then the Awake is also something that I can use as a response to heal up a target. I like that. Also decrease the cost of the branding right. Plus 20 and consume. Oh, plus 20 and consume on a Glimmer. Yeah, let's do that and then remove another card from the deck. Honestly, these unupgraded root seeds aren't really doing it for me. All right, the dupe. I mean, it's an animus of will, isn't it? Is that? Can I find a reason that it's not? Maybe it's if it's Pyogro, we can get double spreading spells out on the same time. All right, let's do it. Is that the best choice that I could have made? No. But is it a fun choice? Also not really. But is it the choice that we made? Yep. That's uh, spot on. It's definitely that one at least. Oh. All right, we're going to have to worry a lot about our flaws here, I think. This Animus of Will goes to the middle floor here, and then we trigger a rally. <sighs> Against Seraph the Patient, we really need those not to be triggered constantly. Uh, hmm. So if I stung you on the bottom... Do I want to set up on the bottom? No, I want to set up as high as possible so I have more time to build my units. Right? Hmm. I worry. Because the enemy gets their extra damage on Incant. 
and they apply spell weakness to units when they go to the floor. Will Denton has 70 health. This starts with 20 damage. Without armor, we're already saying that Wildenton dies after this has 15 incant triggers. That's too much. So how do I prevent that? On floors where the Animus of Will is getting super buffed, I have to play all of my cards. Otherwise, I'm just not going to scale to deal enough damage to the Seraph either. So what does that mean? That means... that I set up on the midline? Animus is just going to have to eat damage for a turn, I think. So, you go there. Then I'm going to just descend you so that I can start playing cards on the next floor. Ah, uh, but it, no, no, no. But I, I descend you and I daze you so you don't do anything to the Seraph. Okay, we can do that. Then Wildleton goes here. And I just care about getting as many can triggers as I can. Oh, fine. I'm going to torch myself and then Glimmer. Just trying to burn cards that I don't think are going to be super useful here out of the deck. Okay, fine. This is working out. We get the Horned Warrior behind you. Then we... Spreading Spores and start trying to go off. Thankfully, we have a free open line down here. So we can actually get a bunch of very important buffs on you. Very, very, very. Just love that word, apparently. Wait, hang on. You were already doing that. No, I could have gone for Incant Floors. My bad. Okay. So, here's the thing. We want... I mean, the Animus is not on that floor yet. So, it's, this is not a good point. But, I use Ritual of Battle here. And then I... Hidden Passage you up. And then I Hidden Passage you away. So that I can cast more spells on this floor. Glimmer? Glimmer placement. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. One, two, three. It's going to take three to kill the frontliner by myself, so I'll use the consume there. Oh! Uh, no! This is exactly what I didn't want. I mean, I have the, the, the awake for the next turn at least. Uh, some of this extra damage is courtesy of the fact that the one, two, yeah, it takes two hits for the Animus to kill the Frontliner, so we end up taking 15 to the Lightwing as well. Actually, is that saving us? We have two melee weakness. That Lightwing deals uh 45 damage and then 22 from the Seraph the Patient. Hang on, how is that possible? Three times combat damage, so 45 from the... Oh, re yeah, 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 regen's going in the other direction. I can't double Pyagro. Right? Oh! I know what it is! We double Pyagro you! And the, we double Ritual of Battle, the, the Gilded Wing. And then we use a single Pyagro. Right? The idea here is that I get those back and then we just kill the frontliner and in uh, faster anyway. So it doesn't matter. Oh, well done, done. What bad news? Now that we're killing the frontliner and saving the Horned Warrior, we have to do this. Ugh. Don't love that. But 
no matter what floor I did it on, Seraph was just going to come back and do that to me again. Um, so I, I guess I just want as many buffs as I can possibly get on the items of will. And then I just keep trying to move Seraph the patient away. Oh, but the thing is, the, if the items, oh. the items of will is always eventually going to have to survive an attack, right? No, wait, one wave remaining. So never mind. We will only ever have the Malay weakness one on us. Uh... Right, right, you buff, buff, buff. Right. Somehow, I don't think that spreading spores is really going to be making the difference here, but I mean, I don't know if there's a great reason not to use it. And you know what? If I use a Pyagro as well, maybe it actually does make a difference. Because maybe I draw enough of them next turn to utilize them effectively. Okay. I'm going to also ascend you. Just go through the kill and... Yeah. Yeah, we're short. Yeah, we're about a thousand shorts. So yeah, the the C25 is the thing that mattered here. Get him. Oh well. Best I could have done. So you know what? Well done, Seraph. Why don't you two-shot me? You deserve it, bud. Ugh. I really thought we were going to be able to scale our frontliner enough. That's uh, that's what the the pickup of the the branding right was a nod towards. The possibility that just stacking a bunch of regen wasn't necessarily going to be enough. That is something I have to think about more commonly when I think about the Seraph, the patient that joins the fight at the very start and has the incan triggers and the rally triggers in order to get stronger. When I think about it, there are a few things that I think about, and the first the the one of the last things that I think about is the melee weakness that applies. I just tend to think, oh, they're going to be attacking our frontline units every turn. I'm going to need the frontline units to have the ability to heal up. Or I'm going to need them to take a, take a hit and be fine. Those kinds of things. So, or rather, sorry, I'm going to need them to take a hit and be fine. And I'm going to need them to be able to heal up afterwards. I don't consider the melee weakness enough, which says that yes... All of that's true, but the initial hit that you take, you need to be able to take a much larger hit because otherwise you're just going to lose your 70 health minion. So interestingly, that's why I should have taken Cycle of Life. We turned it down ages ago because I didn't think I needed it. I thought I already served its purpose in the deck better with the Spreading Spores, and it turns out very specifically that I did need it and that the spreading spores exactly didn't cover the use case that the Seraph the Patient was covering. So that's when I lost the run. Actually, I, I was about to say Emblem of Exiles is when I lost the run, but if I didn't have the split anvil, we were getting nowhere near where we did, right? So the, the either of those still could have been fine. It's just uh yeah, it's just that. Well dang! Something had to break the streak, though. Something absolutely had to. For the moment, though, my name's been Rhapsody, the name of the game. That's been Slay the S Seraph. Slay the Seraph. Uh, friends and foes update. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. There's a playlist in the description down below with all my content of the game past, present, and future, and hopefully we'll see you next time.